Bonjour, mes amis. Yes, that means I have another French film for you today on Noir Alley by a filmmaker whose entire career was dedicated to noir, Jean-Pierre Melville. Today's offering is one of his best, a cop and robber film from 1966 called Le Deuxième Sif. The literal translation is Second Breath, but the colloquial and more accurate English title is Second Wind. That's because the story revolves around a professional criminal, Gustav Minda, who breaks out of prison hoping for a second chance at a relatively normal life. Needless to say, complications ensue, and our hero, who goes by the nickname Goo, is pulled back into the criminal life, settling scores and getting hooked up in a heist that's the suspenseful centerpiece of the film. He's respected and feared, but edging past his prime. So Goo needs a second wind to survive the betrayals of his cohorts and the relentless pursuit of Inspector Blanc, who's as good at being a cop as Goo is at being a cunning and resourceful crook. As in so many Melville films, crook and cop play a game of cat and, well, it's really a game of cat and cat, as these two are equals separated merely by the rule of law. For Melville, the measure of a man comes down to two things, his professionalism and his code of honor. And this film might be Melville's definitive expression of that philosophy. Inspector Blot is played by Paul Maurice, whose early career as a singer led him into a romance with the legendary Edith Piaf, epitome of the French chanteuse. Piaf's blunt assessment that her lover couldn't sing led directly to his becoming an actor which he excelled at for several decades. International audiences know him best as the cruel headmaster in the 1955 suspense classic Les Diaboliques. His crooked counterpart in this film is played by Lino Ventura, a genuine tough guy. He was a professional boxer and wrestler before an injury ended his sporting career. Director Jacques Becker took one look at Ventura and cast him in his 1954 gangster classic, Touche Pas au Grisby, the first of 78 films in which he played either a cop or a crook. Ventura didn't mind being typecast because, as he said, I can't act. All I can do is play myself. And that was good enough for him to become, after Jean Gabin, the most beloved actor in French cinema. In fact, in a 2005 television poll, Ventura ranked number 23 in a selection of the 100 greatest French people of all time, a list that also included Napoleon, Madame Curie, Louis Pasteur, and Charles de Gaulle. Number 23, and he isn't French. Ventura was born Angelino Giuseppe Pasquale Ventura. He was Italian, but he spoke fluent French without any trace of an accent his family having moved from Parma to Paris when he was seven years old. This movie is based on a novel of the same name by a fascinating and very controversial writer named Jose Giovanni. Well, that's his pen name. Under his real name, Joseph Damiani, he'd been sentenced to death for his part in several post-war blackmail schemes that resulted in murder. His sentence was eventually reduced to just over 11 years, and upon his release in 1956, all his civil rights were stripped for life. But that's when Damiani started writing, and over the rest of his life, he produced 21 novels, 33 screenplays, and directed 15 movies. His first book, La True, or The Whole, was based on a jailbreak in which he had participated. Its film adaptation, made by Jacques Becker in 1960, was hailed by Jean-Pierre Melville as the greatest French film of all time. Well, I will have more to say about José Giovanni and Jean-Pierre Melville after the film. And I may have a fun surprise on the other side as well. But now, we need to get to it. If you're feeling a little drowsy, you may want to record this one. With a running time of 2 hours and 30 minutes, this is by far the longest film I've ever shown on Noir Alley. 
The pace is measured, but always engrossing. Every moment methodically calculated and skillfully crafted by one of the most iconoclastic auteurs in all of cinema. Here is La Deuxième Souffle, a.k.a. Second Wind.